Hey, 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 family, it's your girl Evelyn here, and I'm back with another video in my Single Saturdays series. And I hope you've really been enjoying these videos. I kind of enjoy just kind of sharing my perspective about my single life as a woman over 35, my existence, like I said, not a dating, not dating advice, not relationship advice, not marriage advice, because I'm not a coach or a counselor or a therapist or anything like that. I'm just a girl in her 30s, kind of sharing my opinion on what I see going on and just my experience as a single woman. So today I want to talk about this notion of being ready. And oh my gosh, if you're like me, you probably went through a phase of your life where you followed all of these Instagram accounts about being ready for marriage and about, you know, and all these quotes. And it's just all about all this, this laundry list of things that you need to do to prepare to get married. And I, you know, to be ready. And you know what? I have this phrase in the rest of my life, like in my business and all of that kind of stuff. And I tell my clients all this, this all the time that ready is a mythical place, right? That there is no such thing as ready. Ready just means available for use. Okay. If you look up the technical definition of ready, it just means available for use. Like you're just available. Well, everybody's ready. You are available. If you are not married, you are available. Okay. If you are not engaged, you are available. And so I think there's a difference between being ready and being prepared. Okay. And I think you can get prepared a number of ways. A lot of people are prepared for marriage just because they learned it via osmosis from their parents or whoever they grew up under. Some people um, have that staying power. They kind of know what it takes. Some people, some of us have had to study it if you're like me, right? And I think though that the things that people tell you to do to prepare for marriage, this checklist is like, where did y'all get this from? Because a lot of this stuff, and I'm, here's the thing, I don't think anything on the checklist are bad, right? People talk about working on your credit and getting your finances together and doing all these different things. And I'm like, that's great. But people have been getting married since the beginning of time before there was a trans union in the Equifax. You know what I'm saying? Like people have been getting married, you know, like people tell you to finish college. Like people have been getting married before college was a thing. People were getting married in their teens historically. So I think their perspective on marriage was different. And so I think I mentioned this. I don't know if this video is going to come first or after because I anyway, whenever this is coming. But I think I mentioned in another one of my single Saturday videos that I created this um, like curriculum um, that my pastor is now doing a Bible study based off of at our church and this course, because I think there's a difference between being prepared and ready. We're always ready. I, I think that's the thing. It's like you're all you're already ready. Are you prepared is different. It's kind of like if I put you on the stage and tell you to sing, you ready because you there. You know what I'm saying? You you there. Now, whether or not you prepared, that's on you. OK, and that depends on how that performance is going to go. I think the same thing applies when it comes to marriages. So I really. And I can I just say this. I'm, let me put let me put my notes down. I just I just want to say this. I feel like certain cultures. we have this thing about marriage where we're perpetuating like lifelong singleness. And so I feel like we use things like you got to be ready. You got to be ready. You got to be ready as a mask for the fear of getting it wrong. I feel like we use it as a mask um, for the fear of failing at it or not knowing what to do. And so if we put all these things in front of it that we have to do to make us qualified, then it keeps us from doing it. And here's the thing, you're already qualified. You're already worthy. I think people think that it's like instant grits, which are terrible, by the way. You just add two people and stir and it's supposed to work. No, there's, there's work that needs to be done. There's some rough edges that are going to get smoothed out in the process. It's not all going to be shun sun and rainbows and running through a lavender field, holding hands and skipping. Right. And I think if you know that and you're prepared for that, then you have a different experience. It's kind of like I was saying this. Okay. And listen, I have never been married, so I'm not giving marriage advice, but my married, my married people, please chime in, uh, in the comments and let me know if you agree. So, I don't have to have had a child to know 
that labor has pain to it. That childbirth without anesthesia for humans is painful, right? Ladies, we know that, right? And so if you, you, you are aware that labor includes pain, and so when you start to experience pain, you don't think that anything's going wrong because you are aware that the process includes pain. Feel me. If you did not know that labor included pain, then you would freak out and think something was wrong or think you were dying or think that something was wrong with the child and you would make decisions to try to avoid that if you didn't think that that was part of the process. Does that make sense? And I'm not talking about like getting an epidural, but I'm saying like you, you'd be, you, you may make drastic decisions if you didn't know the pain was part of the process. But because you know the pain is the part of the process, even though it, it, you don't know how much pain or what it feels like, even though you know it's part of the process, then you know, then you know you can either breathe through it and have a child naturally or get an epidural and then you have people around you to let you know if there's an abnormal pain right where there is something going on i think the same thing is true with marriage like if you tell me and if i learn and i study that marriage is going to go up and down and that sometimes i'm going to look at my spouse and be like uh you, you still here right or maybe i'm going to look at my spouse and be like we just married today or we're just friends today or then sometimes it is going to feel like the honeymoon. Sometimes it's not. Sometimes they're going to get on my nerves. They're going to hurt me. I'm going to hurt them. They're going to say things. They're family. This, that. And not just the bad stuff, but the good stuff too. But if I know that, then when I encounter that season, I don't think that something's wrong. But if I don't, if I don't learn about that, if I don't study about that, if people don't tell me about that, if I don't educate myself on that, then I could jump ship, aka get a divorce, not knowing that there's going to be some hard times and i think um when i told you guys before i have a really good friend who's a marriage and family therapist and you know the phrase the seven year itch comes from you know people get married and around that seven year mark is where people really start to like struggle and you know is that itch they want to leave and what she told me was she said because usually by that that seven the tenth year is when the first have run out so, you know, you you're newly married, you're newly wed, you bought your first house, you've had your first child, you got your first this, your first that, your first year anniversary, your da 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 like, you know, it's it's that time and you you get into this hard patch, right? And she was like, and that's where a lot of people abandon ship. But let's say, what if you knew that between that five and ten year mark, it was gonna get real interesting. And people talk to you about the challenges that they had during that time that I'm not saying it's going to make it feel any better. Because, again, like I said, I haven't been married. But if I have five or six healthy couples around me, teach me that as a single and my significant other, when they become my spouse, they know that. Then when I get there, I'm like, oh, oh, this doesn't feel good, but this is not uncommon. This is not unusual we put a plan in place for this or we're at least mentally prepared for this right and so you don't abandon ship and so i think there's a difference between being ready and there's a difference between being prepared and i think we should focus more on preparing people for marriage than whether or not they're ready for marriage because ready is almost like saying are you qualified to be almost like you're not qualified to be married if you went to college but you didn't finish well there's so many people that don't go to college and have amazing marriages what is that about what about the people who go to the military what about the people who start their own business what about the people who are dancers or singers or professional athletes whatever right or people who just that just wasn't for them who have amazing marriages college doesn't qualify you to get married like what on what planet does and i listen i got four college degrees that don't mean nothing you know people talk about oh you need to get your money straight People, it's been it's been proven statistically that people who are married who do better financially. It, you can work it out. Is it going to be fun? Maybe not. So, yeah, I so I wrote that that curriculum. I think it's like a twelve to twenty four week curriculum um, about preparing singles for marriage, even even if they're not dating, even if they're not in a relationship, because you have premarital counseling and that's great, but six weeks. 
for a lifetime it seems a little just a little disproportionate to me okay for one of the top five major decisions you're going to make in your lifetime and so i just want to let you know that you're always ready and here's the even if you're not prepared okay well then you're just gonna do the work your ojt on the job training right so i mean it's listen there's people who got into careers who never went to college who flourished they just learned on the job ojt been having this since the beginning of the time you can be prepared you but you're always ready so anyway that's my perspective on it um miles monroe said it best he said people don't get divorced because they don't love each other people get divorced because they do not know how to be married i'm gonna say it one more time for the people in the back he said people do not get divorced because they do not love each other anymore people get divorced because they don't not do not girl because they don't know how to be married and I think about the scripture that says my people uh, perish for their lack of knowledge. Are we teaching people how to operate a marriage? Do, do they know how to do it? Are we preparing them for that? And what it's like to be a whole single and love your life and be working out God's calling on your life and not looking for marriage to be an escape from your own life, but uh, a partnership that you're entering into knowing that you're coming to give and that you're coming to do the work. So anyway, uh, just wanted to come on and say, girl, you've been ready. You can decide to prepare, but even then, don't let the preparation process be a mask for the fear of failure. So anyway, listen, that's why I love the idea of the My Best Life Challenge, because you really start to expand and grow and, and know yourself better so that you would be a better uh, mate to someone. Um, even if you're already married, right? And you feel like this is an area where you could use some work, I say join the challenge, right? So the details, if you wanna join the My Best Challenge are in the description box below. If you get the bundle, fantastic. It's gonna take you in about living your best life in multiple areas of your life. And then also, if you wanna create a vision that includes, you know, the dream of getting married or creating a vision for your marriage that's already in place, then I encourage you to register for my workshop, how to create a vision board that actually works. And I'm really, really excited about that. All the links and the details are in the description box. If you're watching this video and that time has already passed, you can still register and watch the replay. And uh, yeah, yeah, I'm really, really excited. I hope that you have been enjoying this series, this single series. Let me know if this is something that you want me to continue into uh, the new year. Um, I'm gonna kind of be evaluating these series and kind of like the interactions and um, the views and all that kind of stuff to see which series you guys really responded to. I'm going to put all of the Vlogmas videos in a playlist and then um, for the individual series I'm going to make some playlists for those two. And uh, yeah, yeah, I'm really, really excited. So I hope you enjoyed this series and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.